Hello and welcome to the Ministry of Bridges, your YouTube Bridges channel. My name is Gabriel Nevis and this is the Ministry of Bridges. Welcome to this lesson 6 of Bridge Creator tutorial. I hope you enjoy. And if I get this one and say test and save to the library. Okay. Now I go to my six and when I add from the library, I have already that uh, changes here in the end. Test. And I can use the same section and change uh, the work plan for you to see. Let's edit the cross section and use this point one. So if we know how much is the distance in Z between zero and one, we could go and type that value. But that is not what we want to use today. We select the point one, select define by rotation angles, and then give the percentage. So I'm not going to demo today the rotation one, rotation two that you can see here. Um, that will be then for a, a, an episode just with what's new at Bridge Creator. For now, I'm going to use just the orthogonal offset direction, which is the superelevation at this exact key section. And it is in degrees, but you know very well that when we get the superelevation is in percentage. So for that, we could have a support here with the website. In this case is calculationdon.com. Uh, you, you could do the maths because it's explained, uh, obviously it's explained, but uh, I find it much uh, easier to go there and say, I want 2.5% convert to degrees and now I have 1.43 degrees 1.43 enter and now here I know I have 2.5 percent um, this might change to percentage uh, just to save us that step uh, but for now is in degrees if you need uh, use the calculator or uh, do the, the maths uh, yourself so for the point 0.7 I can do exactly the same in this case to the other side it should look uh, great. Let me delete the point 0.4 here. So now I have 2.5% everything in one way, like it is in a curve, which is incorrect because we are in a straight line. So that one goes down 1.43. So, okay, the end station, it will be 9. Save and create. Now I have a deck with 2.5% super elevation. What if we have a situation where the super elevation is 2.5% here, and then let's say there is zero, uh, and there is whatever. So let's just do that. The very beginning, that key section one, and now we copy. Now I go to the end, which is the station nine, and I'm going to edit that key section. And now I'm going to change to zero and to zero and now save select the object and create again so now you'll see let's change the class of this save this close i don't need that anymore now let's see that we start with a super elevation 2.5 percent and we finish with zero here the same we start with 2.5 percent we finish at zero something could happen here is let's go back to that that is the work plan now you might say right but that zero is not happening there so let's say this is on 4.5 and now what i'm going to do is to copy that one so the one again and here copy and say now is nine. So now it'll be 2.5 to 0% and then 2.5 again. So save. So if you have the key sections, in case you don't have um, the left and right uh, road lines, uh, and then the superlevation is not an issue because the concrete will follow those lines. If you need to create your uh, key sections with a superlevation, you always know the stations, where they are, and the values of the super elevation. It's just a matter of doing all that. 
including the situation where your deck might start on a different one, a different station. So let's say my deck starts at 2 and finish at 9, which means when we get to the station 2, my super elevation is not 2.5% uh, anymore, is less, because it's varying to the middle, to the middle uh, in, an, in direction of zero super elevation. So let's do that way. This is all correct. So in this case, say yes. And now let's see. So this thing goes from 2.5% to zero super elevation. 2.5, no. 2.5%, the key section is on chain, change one. A change two is less than that. And then on change 4.5, we have 0%. And then we finish with less than 2.5% because the next key section with a super elevation is on station nine, which is 2.5% super elevation. So you can easily build your super elevation this way. I prefer to have the road lines, the left and right hand side, uh, and constrain my deck to the road lines, uh, but this is uh, easily achievable uh, this way. Build your first section, and then when you, you copy, you don't need to recreate the, the entire object. You just change uh, the value of the super elevation. And so here, for the offset direction, I could use one of these. And now I'm going to give here 4.1, the minus 1.43. Let's go down, I think it looks better. Okay. And now I can demo the defined by point pairs the, using the point two. So this super elevation is whatever, could be even constrained to the row line and to have the point two following that line, in some situations, I don't know how much is the super elevation. So I go to point two and say, define by point pairs. And now I say, I want the plan between zero and one. So between zero and one, and you'll see, even now, if I change there and I'm going to force, the line between one and two will be always along the line between zero and one because I said the point two is to be defined by point pairs. Okay? We could do even more. That is, and ticking that box, we have now two sets of points. Uh, can get more uh, complicated. Let's try between four and three just to see what's happening here. I don't know if it is going to be a good result. Four and three, but I can give you a good example of that. So if I cancel that, and even if I delete, I can add from the library with the void. So let's do this deck. Now I'm going to edit. Let's analyze a good example for defined by point pairs. Look at this one here. So when we define the void, usually we want an offset from this outer line, right? And in this case, I want another offset from this line defined by point six and five to that point. So let's see this one. The zero is the same, the one is the same. Let's check number two. This one was defined with a, with an angle. This one is orthogonal. So we, we have this situation where I have the point one, then it's constrained to point five with an offset because the work plan is four and five, offset of uh, 300 and 375. Let's change this one to 400. So now I have a perpendicular distance between one and the plan defined by four and five of 400. So this is how we use defined by point pairs. If I choose to tick the box, I'll have just one set of work plan direction. So we have between four and five, those 300. If I put here zero, you'll see is there. So I'll go back to 300. And in this case, because the other work plan is horizontal. Uh, I don't need two sets. I just need one work plan. So I could easily 
work this way. Now I could swap the U and V direction, so play around uh, with that. So it will be minus there. So now you you swap this. Let's see zero there um, and. You'll see zero there, from there to there is zero perpendicular to that work plan because I swapped the U and V direction and I don't want that. But again, uh, could be useful in some situations uh, to do that. So that is the defined by uh, point pairs. We've checked the defined by rotation angles and the normal one, something is missing is the the voids and i'll show you how to create the voids let's just go back to another example let's go here to this one that is the one and i'm going to edit and going to create some inner points before that let me take the radius here so sometimes you need to do that if you want to work uh, more and then in the end you always can go put back uh, the, the information for the, the, the chamfer. You always can do uh, this. So if you do that, it will remember, but then if you reload, uh, it will not remember because it cleans the cache. So let's take the, the radius. And now I want to create some inner points. So go back there to interface. And now we can have more than one opening, right? So that is why here we need to give the opening name. So just do that once. So let's call this one A. Uh, I'm going to constrain that to 0 0.2, 0, minus 100. And now I'm going to create. So now I have that point is my interface. Now, don't fall into the temptation of going there and now typing every time you need a point you don't need to type if you need to create a void create the first point now select the point and copy and i'm going to need let's say four points so one two three so now i have three interface points ready to create my void okay so i'll go to this one to the first one and i'll say minus 500 to that side so that means the second one is constrained to two, but 500 to the other side. Now the third one is constrained to the void one minus 300. And now the third one is constrained to the void zero. So don't get confused to the, to the void, to the name of the points because you could end up with a situation like that, you have a alignment, alignment proxy that could be zero, one, two, whatever, then outer face, the same thing, and then the void. So watch out not to constrain to zero outer face when you want to constrain to zero uh, brackets A, which is one void. Now, if I want another void, so I'll select something there, select inner face. I'm going to call it B and add. I just want to add. Now it changed. I have B new, which is a new one. But meanwhile, my A disappeared. Okay, now I have A is back and have a B. So this B now, I could call it B, change the name there. So this one here, 200, and I'm going to copy three times. So now it's better. So the second one will be constrained to four, minus 200, and the last one to five. To five, zero, and Zero. Okay, something like that. And I'll say OK, save, and select the object, create. And now I have the object 
with the voids. So the, the workflow for the voids could be uh, sometimes a little bit more uh, complex just because of the, the voids easily they change names. So when I need a new one, I can go to interface, now give a new name, in this case give a constraint, I don't care, 0.2 and add. Then check the name. If the name is correct, select that point and I'll copy a couple of times. Copy a couple of times and I'll go to try to do that. So I want the C as type 4 between the void 3 and void 2 uh, and 50%. So it's already there. And now I want to go down minus 200. Hopefully it's not too much. Right, you can see this void is not centered, doesn't matter. I wanted to do something interesting here. Let's keep this one there. Let's go to the virtual point and do the same. Type A, virtual constraint there, add. Virtual points are on top, so they are here. So first is the alignment proxy, virtual outer face, and then interface. So I go to the virtual point, and I'm going to do the same. So I want type 4 between 3A and 2A. 50%. So that one is in the middle. Uh, and now I could go and constrain this new point of void, which is C. To my virtual point, to my virtual point. So now I can add. Uh, is too much. Let's put fifty. Right. So now I can select C and copy once again, and I go to still constraint to virtual point, but fifty to the right hand side, zero there. I'm going to add one more point. Mm -hmm. Still constrained there, but in this case now zero in this direction, 50 mil up. And the last one, so select the correct point, add, and I'll change that one with minus 50 and zero. Right. And now I go to this one. So I now have. I put here 50 or minus and now on the number three it will be the same or chamfer 50 oh. minus okay so now I have here a sir um kind of a circle for that void save select create Now, at any moment, we could go and edit, and instead of changing the points from that void C, which is a circular, I go to the virtual point, and I just change, let's put 400, I just change the position of virtual point, because the other points are uh, constrained to the virtual point. So here it's a good uh, example how uh, useful can be the virtual point. So I place a virtual point, then I constrain interface um, points to that virtual point, and then when I need to change, I just change one um, one point instead of changing. In this case, four could could be more. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I'll create again and save to show the longitudinal parabolic variation. First, we're going to jump into Tecla Warehouse and then search for Bridge Creator. And then download the latest version. And then when you download the latest version inside the zip file, you're going to have this uh, demo uh, model with many examples. The TCAP to install the, the latest version the release notes, and then inside the zip file, other files, you'll find a good explanation of the type of longitudinal uh, 
variation. So parabolic interpolation, uh, we have P2F, linear to polynomial, uh, polynomial, linear angle to polynomial, degree, polynomial, exponential. And then you'll have some explanations. And the variables. The other PDF, it's even more detailed. We shall have the equations for you to check and to see what Bridge Creator is doing while interpolating uh, those uh, points. Okay, so I'm not going through those equations. I'm just going to show this model that is available from Tecla Warehouse. We have some examples that we can use and that start seeing. So I'll have the normal linear interpolation. I'll do it. It's going to be there. So create. That means bridge creator from this the station 19 to station 29, it will do a straight line, so linear interpolation of the cross section. Even if we change the interval of um, the interpolation to 0.2. So that means every 0.2 meters will have a cross section, but the variation you'll see is linear. Let's load another one and create. And now I have a different one. So let's see here. Edit. So the first section, which it's over here, if I go to 0.1, I don't expect anything there different. 0.1, even 0.4. Now, we can see the point two and three are going to have that variation. So let's select point two, and you'll see the point two instead of linear is P to F, and then the F value two meters there. For the point three, it will be exactly the same. Now, when we get to the next key section, because we are always looking forward, so the, this is the first key section. When I go to the mid section, because I want to do the reverse, you're now guessing that the point two will have the same thing, but then you need to tick the box reversed. Because if we untick that box, the result is not going to be what we wish. So let's just create. So again, it's doing the same thing. So when you want that mirror, in this case, you need to select reverse and reverse. Okay, and now create. The last section, as expected, because as I said, we look always forward. The last last uh, section will not have anything. So linear, linear, because we we always look forward, right? So this is the P2F. Let's do the P2L. Let me show you that. So first create. So now we have this more complex one. Edit of this. For the point two, we have now the L uh, dimension that we can control. And as said before, this midsection, because I want the mirror, it will be the same information, but reversed. Now the next one, E to V, create, very, very complex, edit. And now I have different, three different types of input. So I have F over there, I have L and V for this angle there in degrees. E3, create, hit, point two, go down, we have A, B, C, for the equation for the this p3 type 
and the last one, en. Very common. Let's see the type of variables for this pn type is b and the b so all these values are fixed and it's just the b that you can uh, change i think we covered everything um, we added to the library uh, we brought uh, sections from the library um, and we have uh, lots to cover in the following episodes about here this component uh, tab I hope you enjoyed and this was useful. Play along uh, with the cross-section editor and uh, leave me some comments uh, to know if you were successful or not uh, during uh, these uh, exercises. Thank you for watching and uh, bye for now. I appreciate if you leave a comment, like and support your Ministry of Bridges channel by clicking the subscribe button. It's all for now, Bridge Modelers. See you in the next episode and have a Bridge Creator Day.